practicing architecture and urban design uh, since uh, 1978, 1979. Following uh, nine years of practice uh, after graduating from Harvard uh, in the United States and the South Pacific and, and Europe uh, for a, uh, a large and, and uh, a very, uh, very well established and famous firm in Los Angeles. Uh, working on uh, some very uh, extraordinary projects for, for example, the, the Mondavi wineries and, uh, um, and uh, some of the uh, buildings in Century City that uh, have become quite famous in movies and so forth. I became entranced with the idea of creating an architecture that was not only beautiful um, and meaningful and functional and timeless, but doing it in a way that was also uh, philosophically um, and, uh, and, and humanistically responsible. The beauty of Tokyo is that for a city of 35 million people, it sure, sure doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel like a very large city, like Los Angeles, for example, or even Sydney for that matter. So Tokyo is actually um, a very uh, uh, humanistic scale uh, city because it's really made up of villages. Akasaka is a particularly interesting neighborhood. It's one of the most historic neighborhoods. This is the neighborhood that um, our two residences are in. Um, it has a deep and uh, rich history. It's always been a neighborhood uh, that's associated with a very high socioeconomic uh, uh, strata of Japanese society. And so from this neighborhood and certainly from these residences, one can walk to many, many, many uh, different amenities, be they shops, restaurants, or places of uh, work, financial districts. Uh, Akasaka is one of those where uh, it will never lose value. Uh, the character of, uh, of our residences is one that tries to re remain strong, that, um, that embodies the idea of gravitas, of uh, dignity, of, um, of strength, of timelessness, of substance, um, certainly uh, in terms of the exterior uh, composition of the buildings, um, while inside uh, there's a, a little bit more uh, laid-back approach to the interior character of the building out of respect for uh, the variety of tastes that we're likely to encounter for the owners. We've gone purposefully for um, darker uh, colors and textures um, that are very organic in feel, uh, that have earth tones, um, that have uh, character to the touch. In the gallery uh, one uh, encounters the elevator and we've chosen to put the, uh, the living area on the top. The reason for that is that the, the greatest access to view and light, of course, is at the higher level. But the third floor also has direct access to the roof terrace, which we consider to be a major amenity, an open space amenity for the residents. Uh, that roof terrace is well appointed. We uh, know that uh, a lot of um, social activities will happen there. It's equipped for uh, parties, uh, for dinners, for uh, luncheons. You exit the elevator and you're in a, in a gallery which uh, flows continuously into a dining kitchen area, a very open space. Uh, a very well-appointed kitchen with um, an open counter, a large dining area uh, that um, has floor-to-ceiling windows that looks out into a garden to the upper branches of, of the, uh, the garden beyond um, and that flows continuously um, into a very large living area with very high ceilings. The idea is openness, open flow, uh, a sense of spaciousness which is uh, extraordinary especially again in Tokyo where footprints typically are small and rooms are compartmentalized. And the large windows in the living room and the dining room also add to that sense of spaciousness. Uh, the basement uh, contains uh, one, of, uh, one of the bedrooms or some of the bedrooms, but also contains 
uh, one, uh, some of the most significant amenities, uh, which include a multifunction room, which can be used and it's set up electronically um, as a home cinema uh, or a gym or a kid's family room. Uh, that family room also gives access to um, a wine cellar, um, which is large enough for a significant wine collection. One of the residences has a mechanical garage system where a car can actually come down and be lowered into the uh, lower level of the garage. Uh, that through our show window, through our plate glass window, we can see that car uh, in full display if we choose to. The main room on the second floor is the master bedroom. This is a very spacious room behind double doors. Uh, and that master bedroom has a walk-in closet uh, or a closet area that is separated away from the bedroom area and it has a very large and well-appointed ensuite bathroom. The fixtures which are of the highest quality and I'm talking about uh, of course the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the kitchen equipment, uh, bathroom equipment, uh, washlet toilets which are of the highest standard and uh, just extraordinary, uh, extraordinary features uh, which uh, foreigners are always amazed by. The functional art that we use uh, for ceiling fans, which are uh, boffy fans. These are very, very beautiful, very practical. In the living rooms, we have uh, fireplaces. Um, these are uh, really designed for um, uh, character and beauty. Uh, of course they generate a certain amount of heat but it's not really necessary uh, because we have very sophisticated hydronic radiators throughout the residence. These are all custom designed um, as is all of the inbuilt furniture um, to be as beautiful and practical as possible. Um, architecture is like people. People have changing personalities and characteristics which one discovers over time and uh, they tend to be full of surprises and uh, and unpredictable. Well, I like to think that our houses are that way as well.